A hiker is fighting for his life this morning after falling off of a cliff near Sunset Rock. I just saw her having some fun taking some pictures and all of that snow and I can see it's finally starting to come down. It is especially glorious today, Greg, because it's National Hug a News Person Day. I know. So I'm giving you some air hugs Virtual right hug. now. Hey, cheers. cheers. No retching. Gotta get it. I can't. Come on, they did it. Someone give me a club. stick of golf club. club. After 41 seasons at the helm, this is Coach K's last season. I did do a little bit of a wardrobe change. Yes, it's probably going to upset some people. Well, guess who I'm rooting for today, Bill? I mean, I just figured it out. Actually. It is. You know what, Bill? I'm a team player, so I'm just going <laughs> to roll with the punches today. I'm going to get a good look here, guys. Yeah. What, what do we know about the perpetrator? Now, he had a pretty um, extensive rap sheet. Our affiliate station, WTVC's Bliss segment, showing us her devastated home. It's hard to believe that it's been one year since I found myself stuck in the middle of this EF3 tornado. Can you say live in Chattanooga in the Batman voice? I'm Batman. This is live in Chattanooga, Channel 9. You got it. That's perfect. Welcome back to our live coverage of the Pink Gala. We are smack dab in the middle of three gas stations right off of Highway 58. And it's a different story in each of them. Let me take you over here to this one. You can see long lines of cars waiting to get gas. If you can hear that popping noise right now, it's because there's power lines over here and we can see them actually sparking. Now, more than an hour after that shooting that Eric just told you about, police say a woman was injured in a drive by. But for others, it's been a bumpy road. But the real goal to go back home. Let me take you inside this heavy duty storm shelter right here. Something else is in the air right now, Bill Race. Yes. Cicadas. The line between outdoors and indoors is blurry at this Lafayette home. Bees, cockroaches, and snakes live here. He was nervous, freaking out. So do Harry and Susan Puglisi and their 13 year old daughter. I'm dreaming that the snakes have fallen on me. I can't sleep. I couldn't sleep last night because the snakes. The family started renting here on East Villanelle Street back in January. In February, Puglisi says the roof started leaking. He says they brought these concerns to their landlord who sent maintenance. But Puglisi says they only put a Band-Aid on it. Did you call them back and say this is a fix? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How many times? 20, 30, 40 times. While we were there, maintenance showed up. When we asked the maintenance man if he'd seen any snakes while he was up in the attic, he said no. But then just a few minutes later, this happened. He just said there are no snakes up there. There it is. There it is, the head. Before they moved in, Puglisi says they were told rats infested the house and that they should take care of the pest themselves by putting out traps and poison. He act like he don't care. He said, well, there's snakes got to be in the ceiling that take care of rats. Property records show John Stafford owns this home. We called him asking if he knew anything about the rats, snakes, or other ongoing issues. It's just a difficult situation. Did you know that there were rats here? Uh, no, I've never heard that, but there are rats everywhere, so I'm sure there are rats there. Are there rats in your home? Uh, yes, and in my, yes, there are. We keep traps out all the time. As for the bees, I would hate to disturb the bees because it's getting hard to even raise bees. Bees are becoming extinct, and that is a strong hive. Stafford says the family hasn't paid the last two months of rent. Puglisi says they told him they wouldn't pay until the hole was fixed and the pests were out. Puglisi hasn't received an eviction notice, but is moving to get away from all of this. He probably would have just tossed some pieces of sheetrock up or something to cover the hole up and just run it out to the next person. Reporting in Lafayette, I'm Bliss Seckman. Life can change in a matter of minutes. Tornado survivor Cheryl Smith knows that all too well. A lot has happened in a week. We first brought you this Holly Hills homeowner story last week. For five months, she's lived with boarded up windows and other storm damage because she says her insurance shortchanged her estimate. It's just like it was on April the 13th. After a News Channel 9 report, we found out the company, State Farm, changed their tune. I'm sure you alerted State Farm and it really has caused some reaction. 10 minutes after our story aired, Smith says she got the call she'd been waiting five months for. State Farm is going to give this homeowner a second inspection. People usually say you go from the bottom of the pile to the top of the pile. 
Well, it seems like things are looking up for this homeowner. As you can see from our news channel line Skyview, the need is still very great, and the county says they need your help finding out exactly where the most need is. We know they're out there. Last week, Hamilton County Commissioner Sabrina Smedley announced a new hotline to help tornado survivors. To say the least, they're still working out the kinks. I did have some calls from constituents. They tried to call, and uh, one gentleman shared that he waited over an hour. Smedley is asking residents calling 211 to be patient because they are not only dealing with the tornado relief efforts, but they're also dealing with COVID-19 and other things as well. The county is hoping to put together a list of those in need. That way, more tornado survivors will have someone to help them in their fight to rebuild. Nobody can repay me for the pain and anguish and mental stress of living in a boarded up house.